It's a very difficult environment to ranch in. There's not a consistent rainfall pattern. In South Texas, as far as the climate goes, we have very frequent droughts. You know, if we're not in a drought, we're probably about to go into one. It creates a lot of challenges managing for livestock or wildlife. Bottom line, we manage for diversity. I'm Joseph Fitzsimmons, and we're here at the San Pedro Ranch. We're in southwest Texas, about as south and west as you can get and still be in Texas. From the closest point to the border, it's about three miles to the Rio Grande, the Rio Bravo. Our grandfather bought this ranch in 1932, and our father operated it for many years, and my sister and I have been very fortunate to operate the San Pedro as well. It was originally a, a Spanish land grant uh, from 1812. This is the marker uh, for the King's Highway, the lower road of the Camino Real up to San Antonio. So people have been crossing here for a while. We're not the first ones here. San Pedro Spring is mentioned in early conquistadors and explorers journals starting uh, in the early 1700s. Uh, it's a very special place. It's very much like it's been for the last hundred years. I'm Chase Curry. I'm the general manager here. From an operations standpoint, our two sources of revenue are wildlife and cattle. Pretty bull. We just finished weaning our fall born calves. We feed them, just helps gentle them down, relieves the stress, and then, you know, here in another four or five days, they'll go on to pasture. Come on, boys. These cattle can go elsewhere and do very well. They're not going to go any place that's tougher than here. It's important to the family that this ranch remain a working ranch. While the cattle are important from an economic standpoint, they're also very important in what we do here on the ground to manage for a more complete landscape. Currently, we are in uh, the worst drought that this particular area of Texas has experienced in roughly 90 years here in Southwest Emmett County. We didn't think it could get any drier, but it has. Despite the historic drought, we've been very diligent in our grazing keeping the cattle on the move, resting pastures. We actually have the cattle in a pasture right now that we haven't been in in almost a year. We don't move cattle based on a day on the calendar, but it's more of a planned grazing. Managing their livestock and their wildlife numbers to leave some residual habitat in, in these dry times. It's really a testament on how they operate down here the habitat is still as healthy as it is even in this historic drought we're in right now. When you do get the rains back, it's gonna respond. They've been a great partner with Texas Parks and Wildlife. Very good cover plan as well for quail. Every year we come out here and we evaluate the browsing pressure on the woody species out here. This is a fresh deer bite. We come out here and count stem tips with Chase and monitor this over the long term and set harvest rates also based on this. So it's been very enjoyable to work with the San Pedro Ranch every year to do this. When you have very little herbaceous and grass cover, you get a lot of runoff and you lose a lot of water off your property. So they try to catch as much water as they can in the soil. And you can really see that, that the springs are still running in the midst of this historic drought that we're under right now in this part of South Texas. Watershed management is really key to how you manage an arid rangeland. Some of their primary creek bottoms, they've uh, restricted from livestock grazing to protect those sensitive areas. And the stuff they've done here, uh, as far as repairing riparian function, is also really interesting. We worked with Bill Zedike out in New Mexico to restore eroded creek bed, basically. 
by correcting these long-standing erosion problems, we've been able to slow the water down and help it percolate to the water table for the San Pedro Springs. Prepare the land for when it does rain, and that's the key. They have a wetland area they built. It was an old caliche pet. We reseeded with lots and lots of natives and wildflowers. So we took one of the least productive areas on the ranch and we turned it into one of the most productive areas on the ranch. It's probably one of the biggest steps they took to preserve the San Pedro was the conservation easement. We donated a conservation easement. So this ranch will stay together and be a whole habitat. Uh, whether we own it or not. And this is in perpetuity. This is forever. You are saying to your children and generations on, we value these very special sensitive areas that they're worth protecting. Our father was an early adopter of holistic resource management. Our cattle operation is part of our wildlife management operation. And holistic management doesn't treat those as being on separate lands because they're not. Our father always told us to manage for the drought and the times of rain and plenty will take care of themselves. I can definitely remember my dad instructing me on riding. He was an excellent horseman. It's a passing of knowledge and tradition. Right, Joseph putting Hayden on the horse. You're handing off the knowledge and the appreciation to each subsequent generation. Now we're in our fifth generation, and I like to think of my grandfather looking down, smiling broadly. I hope my children and grandchildren have an opportunity to experience the challenges of managing a great piece of habitat like this, running a working ranch. You learn a lot managing through tough times. The name of the game is adaptability. We feel it is a tribute to our grandfather and our father and the whole family to keep the place going. It's a great life.